This is Mrs. Ganser, and this lecture is about the ideals of American democracy. It's chapter one, section three, and some. Uh, I've added some additional material to this particular section. You don't need to read anything additional. I have just added some additional things. Here we go. An ideal is a concept of something in perfect form. Oh my, what happened to it? There it is. Per <laughs> perfect form. I guess if I use too many letters, okay, space. All right, good. Um, a concept of something in perfect form. Ideals are supposed to shape our culture. So they are goals. They are what we hope our culture will be. Core ideals of the United States democracy include, number one, liberty, number two, self-government, and number three, equality. So there are three core ideals of U.S. democracy. The first one is liberty. Whoa, I'm running around here. Okay, what is that? And that means freedom. Anytime you hear the word liberty, you should always think freedom knee-jerk reaction. The ability to act or think as one chooses, as long as they don't harm someone else's whoops, freedom or liberty. Okay. Another aspect is being free from government control, which means there are certain specified specified rights of the people, the government is not allowed to interfere with. So the government is supposed to stay out of these particular specified rights. For example, those that are in the Bill of Rights. Um, free, being free to exercise the rights guaranteed to all U.S., that should be U.S., not us citizens, U.S. citizens, whoops, um, in their Constitution and Bill of Rights, if one so desires. So you, the government um, needs to stay out of specified rights, and you are free to exercise uh, the rights if you want to. You're not required. So free from government control and free to exercise certain rights. Self-government has to do with uh, the ultimate power in a just government is the people. So the people are in control. Ordinary people are capable of governing or ruling themselves. The idea here is this. People have the right qualities and traits that they are able to self-govern or govern themselves. Also, the people are the ultimate power because in a, in an, in a republic, with, with, which is what we have, the people vote in the representatives. And if they do a good job, maybe they'll run again and they'll get reelected. So the people and their voting power put them in for another term. And conversely, if they do poorly, they can be quote unquote voted out, okay? Because the people will vote for someone else. Equality must be balanced with liberty, okay? Every time you make someone's, I'm sorry, every time you make something equal, someone's freedom, whoa, someone's freedom, <laughs> Um, someone's freedom is infringed. Okay? There needs to be a balance test to make sure that the decision of, of government is for the good of the people, or at least for most of the people. Uh, too much equality can lead to no freedom. I know that probably sounds confusing, but we will go over that in class 
and we will provide some examples in class. But you have to be careful to say, be careful about saying, let's make everybody equal um, because you're going to end up taking away people's freedom. So if I said to everybody, you have to wear a purple shirt every single day in school, um, in my class, then your freedom has just been infringed because I said that you have to wear a purple every day. You can no longer wear black or white. Your freedom has been taken away. Uh, all people possess, again, this is equality, all people possess a, funda a fundamental moral worth okay, that entitles them to fair treatment under the law. Everyone should be fairly treated under the law and have equal opportunities politically, socially, and economically um, with respect to how they choose to live their lives. There should be equal opportunity. Equality doesn't mean everybody is equal because no one, or that's impossible. I mean, I am 5'4". I will never be 6'4". I will never be equal to somebody that is 6'4 in terms of height. Okay, you can't demand everyone be equal, but you can fairly treat them under the laws that are passed, and you can give them equal opportunities uh, to achieve, et cetera, under the laws that are passed. Principles needed to maintain an Amer American democracy. Worth of the individual, just mentioned it above. Okay, our nation believes individuals see, have proper qualities so they have what it takes, such as sound intellect, the ability to reason, self-determination, to place governing or ruling in their hands. Okay? Each person is unique with dignity and value, and their opinions must be heard, whoops, heard and valued, whether they are in the majority or the minority. Everyone's voice counts. Okay, Rule of law, this is a principle we've already talked about. No one is above the law. This means everyone, whoa, <laughs> everyone must obey the law. Leaders too. So President Trump couldn't uh, get a law passed and then to say, okay, or sign a, law, um, a bill into law and, and say, okay, this applies to everyone but me. No, they can't do that. Okay. Compromise. Two or more groups give up some of their demands and come to an agreement. This prevents gridlock and keeps the political process moving. We have already discussed this. Okay. Majority rule and minority rights. The majority rule. Decisions are made by whoa, majority rule. That means 51%. Okay, you need 51% to quote unquote win. Okay. Here's the fear. The majority will win an election or an issue and then use its position or the outcome to take away the rights of the minority. Okay. And we talked about this, uh, these issues in association with direct democracy and indirect democracy, okay? The majority rule, if there weren't, or if there are not things in place to constrict or keep under control the majority rule, the majority can definitely oppress the minority, okay? In a liberal democracy, um, even though majority rule wins, sorry, individual rights of all people are protected. Okay, they are protected. The minority has the right to voice opinions as guaranteed by the First Amendment, which we will study. The right to assemble, that means to group together and peacefully protest, to petition, to go ahead and contact the government and tell them what you don't like and ask them to change it or fix it and freedom of speech. They are allowed to speak their minds. The minority is allowed to voice its opinion and as well in the political process. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah. Political 
process um, with its built-in procedural safeguards. So there are mechanisms built in through our constitution and the rules of uh, how Capitol Hill works, how our democracy works, that it allows the minority voice to be protected. We have certain leadership positions in the House and Senate. We allow filibustering in the Senate, which is a tool of the minority to get up and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk um, before a vote to push that bill um, into the next session or to avoid having that bill passed or to just delay and irritate those in the majority um, because they can't get the bill up for a vote because we have filibustering um, senators um, in the minority group usually. So there are procedural safeguards to protect the minority voice uh, in our in our system, in our political system. And so majority rule wins, but the majority must tolerate, must be tolerant, sorry, tolerant of minority views. There's Lady Liberty. Okay, citizen participation, a super important concept in a democracy you're going to be having an assignment on citizen participation self government requires requires people to get involved people must be informed of the issues they have to vote attend community meetings serve on juries maybe even run for office okay if they don't get involved, self-government will fail. So citizen participation is not optional. We need to get involved in our government. Okay. Free enterprise allows for people and businesses to make their own economic choices about how to produce, distribute, and exchange goods and serves with little interference or involvement or regulation from the government free uh, per, um, this protects an individual's right of ownership to his own labor so if you work hard you get to keep uh, what what you made okay uh, and as well property although I know you're probably thinking taxes, Mrs. Ganser. Uh, and then free market or a free market economy means the government does not control the economy. So it doesn't have a lot of regulations and rules regarding how the economy and, and how businesses run, private enterprise businesses, private, uh, private companies. Our nation is a mixed market economy, which means we have private enterprises or companies handling many, many things with limited or some government controls. Whoa, here we go. Other principles of democracy. Okay, there, I'm sorry, there's a three types of political party systems I want to mention. The U.S. has a two major party system. We have a two major party system. Um, and these two major parties, ah, <laughs> let's see if I can get that back. There it goes. Um, they compete for control of the government. Right. There are other political parties in our country, uh, uh, not only the Republicans and the Democrats. There are the, the, the Tea Party, there's the Tea Party, the Green Party, uh, the Constitutional Party, the Libertarian Party. There's, there's a number of other parties, but these other parties are, are can't or don't have enough of a base to ever win an election. Okay, so there are other political parties, but none have enough power to affect an outcome of an election. 
Okay, in a single sig single party system, a single political party controls the system or controls the government. There may be other political parties, but they have no power and could never win. Okay, there's really no true choice. Okay. And then the last part, one I wanted to mention is the multi-party system. In a multi-party system, there are several parties um, that compete for control of the government, right? Now, here's the caveat with multiple parties or several parties. Too many political parties can result in no candidate achieving a majority vote. Okay, and so the nation is so split that government is unstable and collapses. So if you had four or five good, hardy political parties um, and we had a multi-party system, it could be that 20% voted for this one, 30% voted for that one, 15%. It's hard to get a true feel of what the people really want. Too many political parties can just end up in, in a very unstable situation. Accountability and transparency. Officials must report to the people, serve their best interests, and be responsible to them. That's accountability. Okay, you're supposed to report and serve the people, do what's in their interest, not your own, and be responsible. If your job requires something, you do it. You do it with integrity. You do it correctly. You do it promptly. Okay. Number two, citizens and the press are entitled to information about government decisions and activities. This is transparency. This means that you're entitled to know what's going on in the government. What are they doing in the Oval Office? What's going on behind closed doors? What's going on in Capitol Hill? What are they doing? Transparency means you can see through. You can see through what the government is doing. They're not hiding things. Okay, that's transparency. Control of abuse of power. Okay. This is, uh, well, let's start here. Separation of powers whoa, among the branches helps to prevent corruption, like wrongdoings, immoral acts, illegal acts in government. So the separation of powers among branches helps to prevent corruption. So people know what they're doing um, per branch. Um, they have their own particular jobs, uh, and they act independently, of course, unless they cooperate. And each of them has the ability to check the other. So separation of powers leads to checks and balances, which allows one branch to check what the other one is doing, and you can curtail possible corruption because of that. Okay. Uh, regular, free, and fair elections and accepting the results of elections. Okay, so the regular, free, and fair means periodic. Okay, fair means that we don't have any uh, bad things going on like stuffing the ballot box or not counting ballots. And accepting the results of election means in a democracy, in a republic, the result is the result is the result. Whether we like it or not, we accept it. So, number one, elections must be fair and free without corruption and threats. No poll taxes, which means that you can't charge a tax for somebody to, pay, uh, to vote because then that favors the wealthy. Poor people are allowed to vote too. And if you, they had to pay $10 to vote, they're not going to end up voting or, or we're not going to have a true true uh, feel or true result of what the country really wants. So no poll taxes or other types of obstacles to voting. 
Uh, at one point in our country, we said you can only vote if you can read. So there was a literacy requirement. That was done away with. And we can no longer do that because people that can't read still should be entitled to vote. So somebody will read the ballot to them if they can't read. Okay, also citizens agree to be bound by the election results, even if they don't like them. Okay, the last one is human rights. Okay, human rights. Ooh, what happened here? Okay, honor and protect human rights of all citizens. This is based upon dignity. How come that's way over there? Hang on, dignity, equality, and mutual respect. I don't know why. All right. That went like that. Uh, human rights. There is a document that is used in the international realm that Theodore, not Theodore, um, FDR's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, helped to write, and she supported an enormous amount. Um, and it was a Declaration of Human Rights. And if you look down this declaration, the right to life, I don't think we do really well at that since we abort babies and we, we don't necessarily treat our elderly with the great respect that they deserve. There's, there's quite a few things here. I'm not sure about that, how well we do with the right to privacy. Um, marriage and family. No, no, that's going in a whole different direction. So you can see that there are many different human rights that we are supposed to be seeking. And I don't know that we do as well as we should. All right, uh, wonderful people of the Most High God, I will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.